This is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. Good evening, everyone. It's being described as the biggest game changer for Tasmanian tourism since David Walsh opened the Mona Museum. The next generation of vessels for the spirit of Tasmania will be brought for forward by two years in a bid to meet booming visitor numbers and growing freight demand. It's a concept designed for the state's new fleet of Spirit of Tasmania vessels, a major announcement by TT Line to bring forward the replacement ships by two years to 2021 in a bid to meet booming tourism numbers. This is the biggest single investment into tourism and infrastructure in our state's history. Significantly larger, the new vessels will increase passenger numbers by 43%, meaning room for more than 700 extra passenger vehicles and 64 new cabins. Recliners also set to increase by 74 as visitor interest in Tasmania skyrockets. Projections are, are saying um, that uh, we're not necessarily uh, fulfilling all the demand at the moment coming into the state, so we really need to, to move forward. It's the biggest day for Tasmanian tourism since the opening of Mona. Um, I mean, what this does is it really turbocharges confidence, uh, particularly for regional Tasmania. An international tender process will soon start for the custom-built vessels with an opportunity to have Tasmanian products featured internally. For instance, uh, widely, right throughout the, uh, the vessel, the use of Tasmanian special timbers. Freight capacity will increase by almost 40% and will remain as a niche freight carrier. Promises today for a biosecurity boost as farmers look for solutions to a rising demand for Tasmanian produce. There has been a number of issues over many years about uh, a bottleneck, if you like, getting freight to and from the mainland. Devonport will remain the home of the spirit despite rumblings of a cheaper burning option. We're talking about going from 194 to 212 metres easily uh, within the, uh, in the envelope of, of, the, of the Devonport port. A new concept for the next two decades of Tasmania's spirits. Jacqueline Robson, Southern Cross News. The anti-poker machine campaign could soon have a major player in its court for the state election. Jackie Lambie today voicing her opposition to poker machines, saying gambling is having an increasingly negative effect on pensioners. I started in the bars when I was 18. Uh, we didn't have poker machines back in them then and I can tell you now, they thrived, they went off. It comes as Ms Lambie today announced her Networks candidates for Bass for the upcoming March poll. Bass is desperately crying out for authentic representation and the team and I have come together. We come from a very diverse background. We're very excited to be an option for the people of Bass. The former Tasmanian senator also definitely ruling out running for Justine Kay's seat of Braddon if there is a by-election. Service Tasmania is being called the Grinch after management told workers to take down Christmas decorations. But in a festive flip, the tinsel was reinstated today following public backlash. Christmas spirit is here and it's on almost every corner this time of year. But Service Tasmania brought no good tidings, telling staff there was no room in the inn for decorations. But today that stance was scrapped people power blitzing the PC police. Well, why would it be offensive? There's a lot of other things offensive about the place without being that, you know. Oh, I think it's ridiculous. If people are offended, that's just too bad. Workers contacted their union when the directive was announced. As we suspected, it was somebody misinterpreting a, a, an instruction and uh, Christmas is back on. Even the Premier... Beautiful Christmas decorations. ..wants to deck the halls. I'm pleased to see common sense prevail. I think it's a bit strict at a time like Christmas. I understand that there are sensitivities to other cultures and things like that, but hey, this is part of our culture too. It's unclear why the order was made in the first place, but one thing's for sure, Service Tasmania is Tinseltown once again. I'm a practising Hindu, but I don't mind it. It's good fun to see lots of things happening around Christmas time, especially the decoration. It should be everywhere. Tom Johnson, Southern Cross News. 
A Supreme Court jury is set to determine whether a Tasmanian man is criminally responsible for striking his father with an axe. The 20-year-old is standing trial in Launceston's Supreme Court, charged with committing an unlawful act intended to cause bodily harm. The incident occurred on January 29th this year at the family's home on High Street. The trial is expected to run until Tuesday. Uber is launching a new service for people with accessibility needs in Hobart. Carers say Uber Assist will help provide more independence and greater options. But taxi drivers and other community support workers are sceptical about the level of driver training. Booking the first ride for a new Uber service in Hobart. It's pretty straightforward. Yes. Uber Assist launching today, which provides extra help for riders with accessibility needs, like people with disabilities, seniors, pregnant women or the injured. You may have to get out of the car, open the door or, or maybe go to their house, like, so it's more door-to-door -door service. So if they've got a wheelchair or a guide dog, you can just give that extra bit of commit, committed um, help to, to get them in and out of the vehicle. Carers like Robert say it will help create more options. With Mum, she likes to be independent and she will actually sit in the lobby waiting for the uh, for hours, waiting for the right taxi to come along that she knows will give her door-to-door -door <laughs> services. Steve was given the green light to become an Uber Assist driver after completing an online training course. It was a two-hour full-on course online. We had different modules to complete. Uh, and at the end of it there was a series of questions which you had to answer. But traditional taxi drivers say they have to go through much more rigorous multi-day training and comply with regulations to provide safe, specialised services for those with disabilities. The Community and Public Sector Union is sceptical. Look, I'm a bit concerned about uh, Uber-type organisations and platforms moving into the space of providing service to, to vulnerable Tasmanians. This is really important work. It's work that should be done by, by people with secure employment. Obviously taxis have performed a great job up to now and I just see this as another way of being able to access another sort of service. For now, Uber and Uber Assist are only available in Hobart. Michael Breen, Southern Cross News. A debate around who owns certain Tasmanian power poles is intensifying, with the Tasmanian Farmers and Graziers Association saying it's currently seeking legal advice. The state government and TASNet Works yesterday said poles and wires classified as private infrastructure are privately owned, meaning landowners need to pay for their upkeep. But the TFGA says we the issue want isn't to draw over. Line through this issue. Uh, we need to clarify who owns the power lines, who owns the poles. There are issues around you know, workplace health and safety. There are issues around liability, i.e. You know, a bushfire starting or some such thing. And obviously there are issues around things such as depreciation and who should be wearing the cost when a pole or wires need replacing. The debate has been ongoing for 18 months. It erupted after a farmer with a $10,000 flood repair bill for a pole and wire disputed he owned the infrastructure. And at home in Tasmania, same-sex couples and wedding businesses are rejoicing at the milestone. Celebrants and venues say the new legislation is a game-changer that will attract thousands of would-be couples to tie the knot here in Tasmania. Ian and Tony have been together for 11 years. They're ecstatic at the legislation finally passing. To actually have it go through like that was just extraordinary and I was, I was in tears and <laughs> tears. The Hobart-based couple tied the knot in New Zealand three years ago. It was a, making a commitment in front of our friends and our family and that was really important to him. So I asked him to marry me. Getting back on the plane and landing back here and not being married was confronting. But at midnight tonight, their vows will legally stand in Australia. I'm, I'm popping a cork at midnight to celebrate yep. the fact that we're yes. actually legally married. Yep. And they're planning to renew them on home soil with a huge celebration. Actually it's going to be bigger than Ben Hur this time. It will be very, very exciting to be able to say marriage is the union of two people. They're just one of the couples who will boost an already booming sector. Every year around 2,000 couples marry here, adding $60 million into the state's economy. These numbers surely set to rise and venues are already reaping the rewards. 
We've just uh, added a new side to our business uh, for specifically for weddings. And uh, yeah, we got uh, pretty much phone calls last night. I'm treated as a bit of a foodie slash Mona uh, long weekend and throw in their wedding. Tasmanian gay rights campaigner Rodney Croom today arriving home after a gruelling week watching the debate in Canberra's parliament. It really felt like parliament was putting its arms around all of the LGBTI people in Australia and saying the hate and the prejudice is in the past, you're now part of our nation, you belong here. He's spent over a decade tirelessly campaigning but for now it's the end of a long road. My job now is to, is to step aside and let others uh, run the race. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. The Federal Infrastructure Agency is pouring cold water on the state government's Taswater takeover. Infrastructure Australia says the plans wouldn't be best practice and may allow for political interference. But it also warns the status quo could see bills double. Australia's water sector has come under the spotlight in an Infrastructure Australia review, a report delivering more ammo for Taz Waters' battle against the state government's takeover plans. Today we have Infrastructure Australia saying Tasmania is going in the wrong direction if the government take over Taz Water. We think it's time for the government to simply drop the proposal. The report says the government's takeover of the council-owned entity could lead to political interference with a need to keep the owner, regulator and operator separate. But on a national level, it warns rising capital and operational expenses could see average water and sewerage bills double by 2040. We believe uh, in what we sought to do because of the strong business case we had to take over Taz Water, the fact it would bring down uh, bills, costs for consumers and deliver better environmental outcomes. Taz Water is also facing troubles on another front with senior staff continuing industrial action after rejecting another employment offer. They're not happy at all about the length of time the negotiations have gone. They're not happy about the, the workloads that are just you know, ever increasing. They're not happy about the fact that executives have managed to increase their bill by 16%. Our offer, I believe, is fair um, and reasonable under all of the circumstances of wage rises that have, have been uh, offered in the public sector uh, in Tasmania and indeed in other parts of Australia. Michael Breen, Southern Cross News. A new first-of-its-kind tourism venture has been launched, taking people on a walking tour along the state's east coast. The Wakalina Walk is aiming to highlight Tasmania's rich Aboriginal history. It's being hailed as unlike any other tourism offering in Tasmania. Our people welcome you to Wakalina and Larapuna. Allowing small groups of people over four days to step back in time and appreciate the state's Aboriginal history. It's the first and only Aboriginal owned and operated tourism business in Tasmania today. It is completely Aboriginal owned. It's been inspired by um, the site, which is the uh, cultural homeland for the Tasmanian Aboriginal people in the far northeast. Visitors will spend four days exploring the natural landscape of the Bay of Fires and Mount William, guided by Tasmanian Aboriginals and Elders. Our guides invite you to touch, sense, hear the stories of the Palawa. Tourism Tasmania says the walk answers a demand from tourists for authentic Aboriginal experiences. The way we like to think about it is it's playing to our strength as a walking destination but it offers a whole another experience on top of that and that's why we believe it'll be so attractive. The state government also boasting the walk as an opportunity for the state's Aboriginal people to gain experiences in the hospitality and tourism industries. I think that now we've got the momentum financially and also in terms of people knowing more about it, talking more about it, that we will get, um, we will really start to get the pick up so soon. Bookings are being taken from January and can be made online. Jessica Moran, Southern Cross News. Now let's take a look at the day's business and finance with thanks to TASPLAN, your local super fund. Australian shares have closed higher after another strong day of gains for the energy, telecom and financial sectors. The ASX 200 index has risen by 16.7 points.
A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 75.1 US cents and 63.86 euro cents. The Hobart Hurricanes have signed former Brisbane Heat player Nathan Reardon for the upcoming BBL season. The 33-year-old walks into the squad as one of its most experienced players at T20 level. He's known for sending sixes oh, into the stratosphere. Well back onto the roof. Goodbye. Now Nathan Reardon is bringing the heat to the Hurricanes. He's the squad's latest signing for the seventh BBL season. I was pretty much finished with cricket and thought maybe there wasn't an opportunity to um, resume my career in the Big Bash. His lifeline, a simple phone call from George Bailey. The 33-year-old big hitter has extensive experience in the format. This will be my fourth T20 club actually, so I think the nature of it is you, you adapt pretty quickly. With the side taking shape, coach Gary Kirsten says his team has plenty of options between bowlers, batsmen and wicket keepers, with a potential showdown looming between Tim Payne and Matthew Wade for the gloves. You know, the bottom line is it's a good problem to have. And Tasmania's under-19s continue their campaign in the national championships. Victoria reached 8 for 192 after 50 overs in the first innings this afternoon. Play continues at Utah Stadium tonight. Good evening, Hobart, Burnie and Devonport 20 today. Launceston and Friendly Beach is our top with 21 degrees. Temperatures sat between 1 and 5 below average. A shower over the west and south and also the northeast, but nothing of note in the gauges. Wynyard, Cressy and Campania 20. Lowhead and Bushy Park 19. Flinders Island, Grove and St Helens 18. King Island and Strawn 17 today. Lyawini a top of 12. A large cloud band has drifted to be just to our southwest with some more low cloud moving over the state. A trough with plenty of cloud and thunderstorms runs from the Tasman Sea north through coastal New South Wales and over Queensland and the Territory. Closer in, the low-level cloud moved over early ahead of a mid-level band that approached from the west this afternoon. Tomorrow, a high over South Australia pushes ridges over the southeast states. A cold front crosses Tasmania with low pressure uh, running through inland Queensland, Northern Territory and coastal Western Australia. The winds northwest to southwest are 20 to 30 knots, reaching 35 knots about the south, easing in the evening, swells building to four metres. Gale warning is on for waters between Tasman Island and Low Rocky Point. A strong wind warning for remaining coastal waters. A small craft wind alert for the lakes. Into the weekend we go. Showers clearing from Hobart. Winds easing, 20 the top. 17 for Maydina and Oatlands with a few showers in the air. A shower or two clearing from Launceston, 22. 20 for Devonport. Showery for Lyawini, a top of 13. Burnie tomorrow, a shower or two clearing, 21. 18 for Strawn and Marawar with showers there. And in the east, a shower or two clearing. St Helens, 22. Swansea and Orford, 20. There's the UV, very high for all centres. On to Sunday now and conditions on the improve with just the chance of a shower over the west and far south. Mostly cloudy on Monday, a possible shower over the west and south again and fine on Tuesday, becoming windy over western areas. A possible storm for Perth, Brisbane and Darwin tomorrow. A sunny 24 in Adelaide, a cloudy 22 for Melbourne, fine and partly cloudy for Canberra and Sydney. And partly cloudy here as well. Hobart currently 18 degrees, Launceston 17 at the moment and 18 degrees in Devonport. Friday, Joe, a big day for me. I had a tooth extracted today and it worked out to be my last surviving baby tooth. 45 years past its life expectancy it was sitting in my mouth and taken out today by Dentist Charlie. Took one rip, got half of it, then we scratched around, got the rest out. I don't know if you can see it in there. A big hole. At least I can say, Joe, that it hasn't affected my speech at all. So you know, everything will be good next week. We just didn't need to see that or know that. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, that's all from the team for now. Have a wonderful evening. We'll see you a bit later with updates. Bye-bye.